Hi, this is Jill at ingvid.com and today we're going to be looking at the way William Shakespeare, the English playwright and poet, has influenced everyday English today. Um, he wrote a lot of plays and quite a lot of poems and some of the lines from those poems and plays have been used in the English language because they were very influential. So, and the way he said things was just very good at expressing something. It may have been that people around him were, were saying all these things and that it was just, he was the one to put them down in print. Um, but looking back through all the old books, um, Shakespeare was the first person to mention all of these. These are just a few examples. He was the first person to put these actual phrases and words into print. So maybe he heard other people saying them, but he was the one who wrote them down. Okay, so let's have a look through the list. So, oh, and there are his dates, just to show you how long ago he lived. He was born in 1564, died in 1616, so a long, long time ago. So it's quite amazing, really, that some of what he wrote is actually used in the English language today. So let's have a look. So first of all, a sorry sight. Okay, so if you see somebody walking along and they maybe they've been caught in the rain or something or they've fallen over into the mud and they've got all their clothes dirty, they look terrible, they haven't eaten for two days and they look absolutely awful, you could say that poor man, he is a sorry sight. Um, sorry meaning sort of sad. You feel sorry for him, looking at him. He looks really dishevelled, very dirty, tired, hungry. A sorry sight. Okay. Uh, next one. Wearing your heart on your sleeve. Okay. Now this is your sleeve. And here is your heart. Your heart is inside here. Uh, but if you wear your heart on your sleeve... This is a kind of a, a metaphor or an idiom, an expression for showing how you're feeling, not hiding your feelings, but making it clear how you feel. So maybe if you've fallen in love with somebody and instead of sort of keeping it to yourself and keeping it a secret, you sort of make it quite obvious to them probably in a very embarrassing way, um, but if you make it very obvious to them that you, that you love them, uh, you're wearing your heart on, on your sleeve, okay? Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so worth a try if you think so, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's what that means, right? Um, in a pickle, if you're in a pickle, you're in trouble. And pickle is a kind of preservative in a jar. So it's like vinegar or something, uh, which preserves food. So um, vinegar. Sometimes you get little onions in vinegar and they're called pickled onions, okay? You can buy them in the supermarket. So if you're in a, if you personally are in a pickle, it means you're in a lot of vinegar, which isn't a very nice place to be. So that's real trouble. You don't want to be in a lot of vinegar. So in a pickle, that's what that means. So you have to get out of it as quickly as possible. So it means in trouble. Okay, next one. There's method in my madness. 
And if you've heard of Hamlet, this comes from that play. Hamlet pretends to be mad. He's not really mad, but he's pretending to be mad for a certain reason, which I won't explain now. It would take too long. Um, you'll notice a lot of M's because Shakespeare is very poetic and you get a lot of sound patterns, the same letter repeated, which makes it a stronger phrase because of that. There's method in my madness means you may be behaving in a very strange way, but there's a good reason for it. You have a method. There is a reason for behaving like that, um, which hopefully it will all work out in the end. But for Hamlet, it didn't really work out, but I'll leave you to find out about that if you don't already know. So he pretends to be mad for his own reasons, um, but um, he's not really mad. Okay, right. So next one. Too much of a good thing. So you could say, you can have too much of a good thing. And I'm sort of thinking about chocolate, okay, which I think about a lot. Um, chocolate, to me, is a good thing. But you can have too much of it, okay, um, and have a heart attack or something if you eat too much. So you can have too much of a good thing. So don't overdo it. Everything in moderation. Okay, just a little bit of what you like, a little bit of chocolate or whatever it is you like, but not too much because you can have too much of a good thing. Right. Next one. To break the ice, um, this doesn't mean literally if the pond has frozen over, there's ice on top, you go and break it, break the ice to get through to the water underneath. This is a metaphor for um, getting to know people. If you go to a meeting and there are people that you haven't met before, uh, and you're all a bit uncomfortable because you're not quite sure what to say. Um, if somebody then makes a joke and everybody laughs and people start to feel happier and more friendly and more relaxed, that's, that joke has broken the ice, okay? Sometimes you might go to a workshop or a seminar where people are discussing things and often at the beginning, you have something called an ice breaker, right? That's the same idea, the ice breaker, for people to start to feel comfortable with each other. Okay, so next one, catch a cold. Now, to catch a cold is when you... <laughs> and your nose is streaming, and you've got a sore throat, and oh, a cold, or the flu, or something. Uh, so, to catch a cold, to me it sounds very normal. I mean, you catch a ball as well, but to catch a cold, maybe before this was written down, people said to get a cold. I don't know. Um, maybe even the word cold wasn't used, but... Shakespeare was the first person to write it down. Okay. Uh, next one, full circle. If you come full circle, maybe you're out in the country somewhere going for a walk and you get a bit lost, but you keep walking and you think you're going in a straight line, but what actually happens is you've been going round in a circle and when you get back to where you started, you say, we've come full circle. Okay, next one, a heart of gold. If someone has a heart of gold, it means they're a very kind person. Okay, gold being a valuable metal. A heart of gold means a really good person. Okay, uh, if someone is hot-blooded, um, they can get angry very quickly or they get into fights, that sort of thing. Their blood 
that is in their veins and arteries is hot. Not li Well, it is hot anyway, but if they're hot-blooded, it means they have a strong temper. They can get angry easily and get into fights. Um, housekeeping, again, is the Shakespeare was the first person, apparently, to put this word in print. And it means, as you probably know, looking after the house, cleaning, um, cooking, keeping things tidy, uh, dusting, all the housekeeping that needs to be done to keep the place nice. Uh, if you say it's Greek to me, it means you you don't understand something. If you're reading a book, it may not literally be in Greek, but you can say it's Greek to me, meaning I don't understand it, because most people, unless they are Greek or have studied Greek, will not understand Greek. Okay. Um, seen better days. If something has seen better days, like a, a chair, if you have a favourite chair that you sit in, but you've had it for maybe 20 years and it's it's not new anymore, it's um, a bit worn, um, a bit maybe not very clean looking, you can say this chair has seen better days. Okay, And then finally, you may have heard this term, star-crossed lovers. It comes from the play Romeo and Romeo and Juliet, which um, is one of the most famous of Shakespeare's plays. They are star-crossed because they are very unlucky. Um, very bad things happen to them. Um, so they, they don't live um, to a very old age because they have a bad, bad fortune, bad luck. So star-crossed. Lovers, the stars up there, horoscopes, signs of the zodiac, that sort of thing is the idea behind this um, astrology. Okay, right, so that's our um, selective list of uh, words and phrases from Shakespeare, which are still used in the English language today. I hope you found it interesting. If you'd like to answer a quiz on this topic, please go to the website, ingvid.com and come and see us again soon. Okay, bye for now.